threads. Okay. Because those are, to me, kind of the most exciting new thing in the world of non-surgical facial rejuvenation. And not well, a lot of people are doing PDO threads. I feel like that you're at the forefront of PDO threads in, in the industry, so that's kind of exciting. Well, so the history of PDO threads, it's interesting. When they first came to America, when, when the new PDO threads came here three or four years ago, a lot of patients were very, uh, not suspicious, but just had heard bad things about mm -hmm. the thread lift. And what, the, what that referred to was a decade ago, there was something called the thread lift that was done with permanent sutures. Correct, yes. And, and it worked, but what would happen is, after a year or two, three years, as people aged around the sutures, you could mm -hmm. see them, mm -hmm. and, and there were a lot of late-term complications. Mm -hmm. So that product was taken off the market in 2007, but people still remember that, so that's kind of the history of threads. They were reintroduced about four years ago, made of absorbable suture, PDO, right. and that changed everything. Right, absolutely. Uh, and PDO is used in all kinds of procedures, pediatric heart procedures and abdominal procedures, so it's that dissolvable suture. Um, so there's a nice safety profile with the PDO threads. Mm -hmm. um, because they're not permanent, over time they break down. It may take six to eight months for mm -hmm. the larger lifting threads to break down, but the smaller threads about four months. Um, so during that whole time, they're building, patients building collagen, you actually get some improvement in things like fine lines around the lips or mm -hmm. uh, lower facial lines. So that's, I like the versatility of PDO threads because you can use them all over the face, really all over the body. And mm -hmm. one, they'll lift, two, they'll soften lines, mm -hmm. add volume. Um, I really like them on the lips to kind of uh, define the lip line. I really, in my mind, I, conceptually, I break threads into two general categories smooth threads which are used for volumizing mm -hmm. uh, but you can also use them to soften scars and then suspensory threads the ones with unidirectional barbs those are the ones to me that are really transformational those are the ones that that are part of the symmetry lift where you can get someone lifted up and back mm -hmm. without doing surgery right. and i think the, the so they're really different mm -hmm. uh, but both very impactful what's the downtime typically would you say for if you did like a symmetry lift or a PDO thread lift? Should be minimal, you know, because we're, again, we're doing the symmetry lift in a series of treatments, probably after the first treatment when we do the big treatment, there, there's typically a few days of swelling, discomfort, potentially some bruising, mm -hmm. but people can do these procedures and live their life. That I think mm -hmm. is an important point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no it's, anesthesia. Right. That's a big one for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And we see patients of all ages, and so I think, you know, mm -hmm. Patients younger may not necessarily want to go under anesthesia, and some of our older patients may want to avoid anesthesia as well. So that's well, kind of a nice option. And to that point, you know, one of the things we're doing too uh, with PDO threads is neck rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. You know, over five years ago, when patients we didn't say, have a lot of options. My, what do I do about yeah, my neck? Right. We basically shrug our shoulders and say, find a surgeon. Yeah. Then all therapy came out, right. and all therapy made a difference, and then which is high-intensity focused ultrasound, right. and then PDO But there were limitations to the, to the Althera, so I think now we have a combination of the Althera for skin tightening and the PDO thread for lifting, and you get a great result. Yeah, I think that's really the key, combination treatment. Yeah. So now there's a lot we can do to, for, for neck rejuvenation as well. But to that point, one of the first things that I ask a patient uh, that's, that comes in for their neck is I'll say, you know, would you consider surgery? Right. And if the answer is yes, then right. I, ask, I ask them to see a surgeon who right. are not surgeons. So I right. say, see a surgeon, get an opinion. Right. But if they say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm too really, old, I'm not going to do surgery, then right. then we can, because we're not going to get surgical we're results. We're not going to get surgical results. what we're doing. Yeah. And, and some people, you know, for the optimal result, need surgery. Absolutely.